Hi everybody, Linda Carroll here from my studio, Gather of Great Things, and I'm back with page three in my junk mail art journal. And I've already um, pulled some images and I did some fussy cutting of flowers and I found a face that I really liked and I found some bugs and some butterflies and a lot of things that I just caught my eye and I thought would look really, really good in this book with the color scheme that I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to stick with. I also found some stamps in my stash. I was looking for colors that would work and um, these I thought were really, really great. This one is a one and a half cent stamp. So it's pretty old. That's Martha Washington. So, and architecture. So anyway, um, I, if you remember, we did this piece uh, last time and we did a mixed media background and collage uh, in the foreground. And I've gotten a lot of really nice um, comments about this piece, so thank you very much. And on um, this page, we're going to uh, do a simpler background. I really like this, it's uh, scrapbook paper, but pattern paper, but I really like um, this background. And with the kind of neutral tones I'm working with on this page, I think this would will really work out well. So I'm gonna get my piece of parchment paper out, although I'm main I'm not gonna do much painting on this, if any. And I've already cut this pretty close to the size that I need. So I'm going to get my glue book out here and get to work. So I hope everybody's doing well um, here in Myrtle Beach. We have a lot of people in town and I had to go to CVS yesterday to pick up prescriptions and I intentionally went through the drive through but as we drove up the road, every everywhere was busy. I mean, all the restaurant parking lots were packed. Um, the close, um, it's a touristy area, Barefoot Landing, um, was packed. The parking lot was packed. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it that there were so many people in town and a lot of out of state um, and Canadian license tags. Um, now this time of year we do have the, the snowbirds that come down and, um, and from Canada we have our neighbors, our Canadian neighbors that come down and spend the winter time which is great but for some reason we have a huge number of of visitors to um to myrtle beach and i think it may be because so many people uh now they're working from home on their computers or their work is closed down and the kids are out of school um so they decided to escape where they're from and and uh and come to the beach for the duration of their time off so i I have to tell you, I'm not real thrilled about that. Um, I'm trying not to be 
um, selfish and I'm trying to be open-minded, but um, I think it's it's a little scary that, you know, they've given people off to stay home and be safe and protect their family and they're on the move um, and uh, going on vacation. <laughs> So I hope it doesn't cause any problems. Um, we've had three confirmed cases of the virus here in the county that I live in. And so they're closing schools tomorrow. And so far they um, have only canceled events that are um, large gatherings, uh, but, you know, I know my neighborhood canceled the social events they had planned through, um, the middle of April. I believe it's the middle of April. So we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, let's get back to this. I've, I've torn some, um, book pages up and I'm going to just use these in the background to break up um, the continuous background and make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm distressing the edges of these with um, using vintage photo and just gluing them down on the background. I, I think that this you know, this background is really, <clears throat> really grungy enough. I didn't want to grunge it up anymore. So, I think adding these little strips of book pages. And I, I, you know, I bought, I usually buy every Reader's Digest condensed book that I find when I'm thrifting or yard sailing or whatever because I love the pages and I love the books themselves for journal making and so these particular pages are out of a um, out of a reader's digest book and as I looked at it I thought oh I want to I want to read that story so I can't tear it apart yet. Well, luckily I had two of this particular book. So I'm just going to tear one apart and, and read the other one. So I'm kind of discombobulated here with my, where I have my stuff. I tried to clean some some of the stuff off of my table. I really have to clean up my studio and do some organization. But ever since I've started making the videos, I've been putting it off because I want to make another video. And there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you have to do in order to get ready to make the video. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, looking through my stash for the right pieces that I want to use and you know I have to wait till they call to me and um, like my cat just did my sometimes cat just did from the other room but um, so it takes a while, and I don't want a fussy cut on while I'm filming. So I did all my fussy cutting and everything. But um, I found uh, this image online. It's, I think it's Gladys Cooper. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it is. I cut her name off and threw it away, but um, it was just the right 
kind of image I was looking for. And I want her to stand out um, from the background. So I'm going to distress the edges. And I just, you know, I have a lot of images saved on my computer that I've found and on different sites and and um, so I spend a lot of time looking at images and I found her and I thought, oh, the colors were what spoke to me first. So I thought, well, you're, you're going to be perfect in here in this particular piece. So I just printed it out on regular 20 pound copy paper. You know, it's my art journal and it's not going to be for sale or anything. This is kind of, I kind of record my thoughts and what's happening in my life is reflected in the, in my art journals. So I tend to keep them all. Okay. So I have, um, I found these great bugs and I thought I'd use them like I used the fish on this piece, but I didn't want to fussy cut around them because there's some, there's such fine detail on these, um, drawings, these engravings that I didn't want to um, do any fussy cutting, so I thought I would use them kind of like I use stamps. Um, and I roughly laid this out the way that I want it. I found these this measuring tape um, on a scrapbook page. Uh, pattern paper and I liked I liked the grunge look I gotta trim the bottom off just a little bit so I really have just been staying home, which I like. Um, I don't have any any problem staying home and staying away from big crowds of people. I'm not one to really like to be in big crowds anymore. Very rarely will I do that. Um, we went on a trip to Las Vegas in the fall, and I found myself, you know, in crowds of people. We did go to uh, Cirque du Soleil shows, and we did go to a concert. Um, and I, I was okay, but on, uh, like Sunday, I think it was Sunday afternoon, we went out and there were a lot of people in town. And I looked at my husband and I said, um, you know, I don't think I want to stay out here. I think I just want to grab a quick lunch and go back to our room and do some art journaling. So he said, okay, that's fine with me. I think he was watching um, playoffs of something. Can't remember what football, I'm sure. So we did. We grabbed a quick lunch and, um, and we went back to the room and I was perfectly happy to to be there.
Okay. So I found these flowers that were in my bookcase um, in a set of, let's see, did I put them back? No, I didn't. They were in a set called The Flowers of America. And I found these years ago, and they're really nice little pamphlets um, that were created for a lot of different flowers, and I've never done anything with it. So since I'm working in this particular kind of neutral um, color scheme, with touches of color, I thought, well, I'll go through here and see what I can find. And then I got sidetracked thinking, oh, this would make a really nice journal or pages in journals. So I'm probably going to take the whole thing apart and take the pamphlets apart and decide which ones I can use as in fussy cutting and then which ones I want to use in, in my, uh, in my journals so I had this laid out and I know I want a butterfly on here and I know I want kind of like that and I know I want my beetles on here crawling and I know I want a stamp and what I really, really know is I found um, a vintage uh, piece that had watchmaker's parts in it. And I was so excited. So I printed these out and the colors just work really well. Um, and her eyes are pretty dark here. So I wanted something that would lighten up the um, the page a little bit so I thought oh, these would be perfect kind of steampunky kind of looking um, but you know at some point these were hand drawn and I I love the style it just works with what I'm what I'm doing so I think I'm gonna tuck that one there and this one will go on her other eye kind of looking through the eyes of time I guess is what this is symbolizing to me um, you know, I really think we need to learn from history looking back in time because, you know, if we don't, we're going to, we're going to continue to do things over and over again until we learn, you know, what our lesson is here. And, um, we were watching a program last night when the Spanish flu, which hit the United States in uh, 1918 and the thousands of people who died in that outbreak was heartbreaking and it's like you know the the flu didn't come from Spain it it actually they think started here in the United States and um, so it really should have been the American flu, but no, they called it the Spanish flu for some reason. And um, so I'm not quite sure what we learned from that outbreak, except that it's a horrible thing. And Hopefully this time we'll get some
positive realizations from what happens when an outbreak or a pandemic um, breaks out in the world and how we can handle that. And hopefully everybody's doing the best they can, but I think at this point in time, we really need to think about taking care of ourselves. Okay, here are her new eyes looking through time. And my bugs. And to figure out my headdress here. Now I want these flowers to lay out. I think I want this one underneath. And then I want this one kind of curved around this way. These are um, camellias which have been blooming for like the last two months here in South Carolina. And the center one is a magnolia flower. And um, they're not blooming yet. They will be blooming in the summertime. But I thought they were very fitting for my journal. We have both flowers. They're actually the, excuse me. Okay. I'm back. Um, the, uh, I think I was talking about the, the flowers that we have in the yard, but the, uh, the camellia is come in all different colors and, um, real pretty reds and pinks. And, uh, and of course the Magnolia is, is white and the leaves are really, really shiny. So I think that's how I want to place them on here. And then my butterfly will overlap there. And then I think this bug will go right there. Okay, so the bug has to go down first. Oops. I'll make sure I distress these edges just a little bit to make them make this stand out from the background a little bit. Okay, I like that. Not sure about that one yet. So we're gonna glue the magnolia down first. I just put little marks around my images once I decide where I really want them to be just so I can get them back in approximately the same place. And get the look that I want. I haven't decided if I'm going to add any more color to this. I thought I would get the whole thing the entire collage done and then I would 
work on the color and see if I want to enhance the, um, the color anywhere in the piece. Whenever I do collage, I think I've mentioned to you before that edges, I'm always um, conscious of my edges and um, where things fall and, you know, how the edges intersect and, and what kind of negative space, like right here in this little area, what kind of negative space is created when I glue down my pieces. I'm just gonna weight that down for a minute. I use these, um, these uh, flower, I forget what they're called, it just went right out of my mind, but they, they use them, they used to use them to arrange flowers um, in vases, and I use them as weights when I'm making my books. So they're really convenient. I used to keep color pencils in them, but um, I decided that didn't work really well. So, but I really like them. I like to look at them, you know. I think they're really cool pieces, but um, so now I use them as weights. They're solid glass and Really, really pretty. I kind of try to adapt things that I've collected um, and use them in my studio, my the vintage pieces that I've collected and um, use them as any way I can, really. I like having having them around but I really can justify it I think if they're if they're useful so I was amazed how all my the things I was finding and pulling the colors just worked so well together okay So, I'm ready to do this one. And this is the smaller flower. Amelia. And then this is the larger one. So, I want this closer, appear closer um, to me, and the smaller one will kind of recede back. She kind of has her head turned a little bit, um, so... I like the 
the depth being created um, in this collage with the layers that I'm applying. And, you know, all the time I, you know, while I'm working with this, I keep looking at the colors, trying to decide if I want to um, make any of the colors darker or lighter or what I want to do, if there's enough contrast on the page. I need to, you know, I'm looking at the balance of light and dark, um, if I'm pleased with that. Okay, I have this stamp that I really like. I love the color of that. And... I really like this one too. So I kind of, I want this to be prominent in the piece. Um, and also, when I look at, you know, where my eye travels in this piece, it, this putting the stamp like this kind of sideways makes you stay inside the artwork. And I'm wondering if I should turn this bug around to kind of continue that. Here's the bug, and here's the stamp, and the bug, and then the other bug, so... I think that might be a good decision. Now, and a lot of times, I've you know, I've been doing this for such a long time, those decisions aren't consciously made. They're, you know, I, I just do it. I don't consciously think, oh, I have to, you know, have things pointing in a certain direction to keep your eye on the page. Um... So, but I, I want you to kind of realize why I'm, why I'm putting things on the page in the way that I am putting them on the page. Um, so that might help you in your, in your learning and, and, and decision making. when you are working on your art journals and collages. I have no idea how old this stamp is. Pretty old. It's pretty crunchy. Just being crunchy. it was going to rain today. It's been kind of cloudy on and off all day. But now, it's later in the day, we have blue sky. So, let's see, I'm going to turn him around.
There we go. You know, it's funny, I'm used to working in the um, in the Dilusions art journal and the pages are really large and this is really fun for me that I can actually finish a, a page in such a short time um, instead of taking two or three days to to complete a page. Um, so I think those are all the images that I want to include on this page. Um, since I'm working and you know, this page is a, is a little bit brighter than this one. This one is a little bit softer colors. Um, Normally, I would go in and, and put some uh, pink on her lips, but I like the softness of the colors in this piece. So, I don't think that I'm going to, um, to go in and do anything else with it. Uh, well, I say that, and then I look at it, and I go, what? Ah. I think maybe I need a little bit of color in the um, in the flowers just a little bit and I'm looking for my color pencils which I had packed away when I went on the trip last week so this Camellia would have a little bit of pink in it. And I, I don't want a lot of color. I just want a suggestion of color. So, and this paper, uh, has a grain to it, has a texture to it. And I kind of like, it's kind of like a watercolor, pebbly watercolor texture. So I like the way it's, it's giving the color pencil, I hope you can see it, color pencil, a little bit of texture. Yeah, I like that, it's just enough color just a little hint of color. And there. And then this one. I'm using my Prismacolor uh, color pencils. And you know, I'm not I'm not coloring the entire flower. I'm just kind of giving it a hint of color. Just a little bit. Yeah. I like that. Maybe Just a little more color down here on her cheeks. Most of it was covered up when I put the dime pieces on, so. Get a little bit more color there to her cheeks. And the lips, I couldn't resist, sorry. Couldn't resist. I love these um, hand tinted 
uh, portraits that they did. I, I have hand printed um, portraits of myself when I was a little girl and in one of them I have blue eyes <laughs> and I at the time had really dark chocolate brown eyes. Um, now I have that they've turned kind of greenish as I've gotten older. Let me see here. I have a little edge of that grid paper that's showing. I don't like it. I'm going to use a little piece of washi tape. And just take it up to her, her shoulder. Oh, that didn't cut very well. And if you know me, I have usually on all my pieces, I have the number 23 or 5 in my pieces. And there's a 5 right here. And there's a 5 right there. And there's a 23 here and a 2, 3 there. So they, they have a way of showing up um, in my work. And I love that part of doing mixed media and collage, how things appear like magic. Okay, I think that I'm done this piece. And I'm not going to continue um, on these pieces today. I think that will be my next video we'll go ahead and um, work on this flip. And I want to make sure that the pieces that I pull work with both this image on this side and then work with both images when I open it up. So I have a feeling there are going to be words on these flips and um, but we'll see what happens i'll see what what calls to me so thank you for joining me for page three in my junk mail art journal and it is transforming um and more and more with each page so i'm looking forward to working with you throughout this this project it'll be a lot of fun so I hope you have a great rest of your day or evening, and thank you for watching. Share with your friends if you think that someone would like to watch my videos. I would appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.